everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and we're back with yet another random ass anime review. And today I decided to talk about Heat Guy J. So this one is a science fiction and crime series that came out in 2002. And this is one I do remember seeing pictures of it years ago, and I always thought it looked interesting, but I just never seen it until now, and that should tell you how much uh, shit I need to watch on my watch list. So anyways, let's just get right to it and start talking about the story. So the story takes place in a future cybernetic town called Judo, and it stars the main character, Daisuke Aurora, who is the leader of a special service division, and he's one of those main characters who is very laid back and chill. But also he can be a little bit too laid back to the point where he can be lazy with doing paperwork. But when it comes to action, then he's all about it. But he's not alone for that he does have a partner named Jay, who happens to be an android. And if I had to compare him to anything, he's pretty much the Terminator for that. Not only are they both very strong, but they also uh, are the straight man type. So they don't really joke around and are very much, you know, very straightforward about how they do the job. So these two characters have to work together and they fight crime and of course one of the biggest things that they have to fight against is a criminal organization called Vampire, who I assure you are not actual vampires, though I kind of wish they were. So that is like the most rushed way of explaining the plot here, but there's a couple other things that I do want to talk about here for that there is some other characters in here, such as Kyoko, who is the third member of the uh, special division. She's the one that does all the finances and even gets on Daisuke's case sometimes. And one more character I do want to briefly touch on is a character named Boma. He happens to be this very weird edgy looking character who has this uh, crazy power where he can turn into a werewolf. So here's the thing with this show. You got actual werewolves and then you got an organization called Vampire but they're not actual vampires. See, this is why I wish they were because I think they really should have just went all out with it but oh well. Now, of course, there is a lot of other characters throughout this whole show, but those are going to be the ones I'm just going to briefly touch on here, because if I went over all of them here, yeah, I would be here for a very long time. And I mean, is anyone really going to be disappointed in the fact that I didn't mention freaking Monica and her pet donkey named Parsley? Well, I guess I mentioned it now, but anyways, yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of characters within this show, and a lot of them are quite interesting. But before we move on to other things, one other detail I do want to mention that I did thought was a pretty interesting idea for this show is that in the city of Judo, there is a law that they outlawed other androids from coming into the city. And the reason is that there was a terrible accident that involved with androids, so ever since that happened, they just completely outlawed them. And you're probably wondering, well how is our main character Jay still allowed? He is the one exception to the rule for that he makes sure there is no other androids that are coming around causing problems. So I do think that whole aspect to the show does have some pretty interesting ideas that I did like. So there you go. That's all I'm going to say about the basics of the story because, you know, like I always say, I'm not going to get into spoiler stuff because, you know, this is an old show that not a lot of people watched back then. And you rarely hear people talk about it nowadays. So yeah, there you go. That's all I'm going to say for the story. So now let's get moving on and start talking about the other things like the animation. So the animation in this one is all over the place, but I would at least say that it's more good than bad. So let's just talk about like the aesthetics first, is that I really love the way that the setting looks in this one. It's a very cool futuristic uh, cyberpunk looking world, I like all of that. The technology and the weapons also look pretty cool as well. They definitely remind me of the, uh, the mid-2000 technology type style that you used to see all the time. I think it was called like... Fur Tiger Arrow or some shit. I don't remember exactly how it's pronounced, but you know, if you look this shit up, you'll kind of know what I mean. It definitely does remind me of that a little bit, and I definitely do dig that quite a bit. And as for the character designs, I would say they are pretty good for the most part. Like, I find the two main human characters being Daisuke and Kyoko, they look pretty decent, like, simple designs. Nothing crazy, but, you know, looks pretty good for what they are. But I think Jay is definitely the highlight here. I think he just looks like a badass. I mean, he's pretty much a mixture of three things. The Terminator, Q from Street Fighter 3rd Strike, and Jigen from Loop on the 3rd all in the one. It's fucking awesome. And as for Claire, the leader of the vampire group, he kind of looks like your typical emo guy, which is kind of funny to look back on. And hell, you know what, even um, Boma kind of looks like that too. But I think I do like his design more for that it does kind of stand out more. And then one other character I will mention since I didn't really talk about him earlier is that uh, Daisuke's brother Shun actually kind of looks a little bit like a male version of Integra from Helsing, which I thought was kind of amusing. 
But yeah, for the most part, the character designs are pretty decent, with a few exceptions that are actually pretty cool looking. But as for the animation flow itself, it's quite good for the most part, especially the fight scenes. Yeah, the fight scenes are done really well for an early 2000s anime, probably one of the better ones that I recall seeing. And all the usual 2D stuff is actually done pretty well, too. My only big complaint with this one, and well, you probably already know already, is that, just like a lot of other ones out there around the time, this one uses a lot of 3D stuff. And yeah, it's very inconsistent, but what's interesting about it this time is that there are times where it looks like your usual, uh, very tacky looking, and it just, like, looks kinda crappy, and then there are times where they actually utilized it pretty well. Yeah, believe it or not, there are actually some parts in this where they do use some 3D effects, and they actually made them look pretty good for the time it came out. In fact, I would even say, out of all the early 2000s animes I remember watching that uses a lot of 3D CG stuff, I think this is probably one of the better ones. But as I keep saying, it is unfortunately not very consistent, but at least when they do do it well, it's at least done pretty well. So I have to give them a lot of credit for at least trying this whole new thing, and they actually made it work pretty okay. So that's what I mean by the animation is very all over the place. So there's a lot of parts in it were actually done pretty well, and I really like it. And then there are parts that are not so well done, but... But honestly, I think it's actually quite good overall. Definitely more good than bad. I mean, definitely beats the shit out of the other one that I took a look at earlier. Alright, so let's get moving on and start talking about the music. And the music here is quite good. I actually do really like it for the most part. You got a pretty decent variety where you got some stuff that sound like your typical crime type stuff. You also got some rockin' tunes for the action scenes. And there's also one song in particular that kind of sounds like... Rockin' Irish music. Yeah, I don't know, like, the best way of describing it, but that's my take on it. And honestly, I actually kind of like that song quite a bit. And those are the only ones that really stand out to me the most, but the ones that don't stand out, they're still good songs, they're just not the most memorable, but at least they do fit the show very well, so I really don't have anything bad to say about any of the music here. And as for the opening and ending themes, well, the opening song is actually uh, Face by a band called Triforce. And no, it's not spelt the same way as the Triforce from Zelda. And this song is fucking awesome. I really love it. It kind of starts out as uh, like desert music from a video game, but then it progressively goes into like more like heavy rock. And yeah, I just really love it a lot. I would recommend hearing that song. And then there are two different ending themes in this one. The first ending theme, I do like quite a bit. It's a good, like, upbeat rock tune. It's not bad. But then the second ending theme, this is my favorite one. So the first thing I have to mention about it is that it was actually arranged by Yuki Kajura, one of my many all-time favorites. And I've talked about her quite a bit on this channel. In fact, she even did the music for the anime noir, which I really loved a whole lot. So, yeah. The ending theme here definitely sounds like her style. It has, like, the very quiet, but yet kind of sort of, like, majestic vibes to it i really dig it a lot and i'll never get tired of it so i actually thought it was really cool that she was a part of this anime too but yeah both ending themes and the one opening theme they're all really great so now as for the voice acting in this show if you're gonna watch this one in english i can definitely say that this one is really damn good in fact i'll even go out and say that i actually like the dub for this one more than i did for the other one that i talked about recently there Kaze no Yojimbo, and that dub I did like quite a bit too, but this one, I actually like it even better. I actually found this one to be way more consistent. So Daisuke is voiced by Steve Staley, and I think he does a really great job as him. And I wish he would do more roles like this, for that I do think he does do a good job with the whole laid-back aspect. And then Jay was being voiced by Bob Preppenbrook, and not only was he just a really cool voice actor back then, but I actually think this might be one of my favorite roles that he's ever done, right up there with Rasputin from Shadow Hearts 2, and that's saying a lot. And Kyoko was being played by Carrie Welgren, another one of my favorites that I really like a lot. In fact, it's kind of funny that she is also another character from Shadow Hearts as well. And then Claire is being voiced by Johnny Yum Bosch, which I think is quite refreshing because I feel like he doesn't play enough crazy characters enough. And he's always really good at them too. And then Boma is being played by Richard Consino, which, yeah, I guess he is kind of a crazy character too, but not on the same level as Claire or, you know, the other one that I talked about there. But I also thought this was a pretty cool role for him to do. 
And then you got some other really good ones that I like, such as Wendy Lee, Kirk Thornton, Dave Wittenberg, Dan Warren, Lex Lang, Steve Bloom, Michael McConaughey, Karen Strassman, Jameson Price, Michelle Ruff, and even Michael Forrest. So, yeah, there's quite a lot of people in here that I really do like quite a bit. And yeah, like I said, I think they all do a really good job here. I don't think there's any, like, one here I would even have to be nitpicky about. So yeah, no matter which language you want to watch this one in, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. So now, as my overall thoughts on Heat Guy J, is that this is one that I actually liked quite a bit. I actually really enjoyed this one. The plot itself, I thought was pretty interesting for the most part. The very first couple episodes definitely do seem like one-off episodes, you know, very episodic. But as it goes on, it does kind of start to connect more. But I feel like that those first few episodes do a good job at letting you know who the characters are, what the world is like, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And most of the characters I really liked, for that I felt like a lot of them had some really good dialogue, a lot of them were very fun characters, and this show also had some good comedy bits as well. Of course it's not like a full-fledged comedy or anything, but they were at least light, fun, and amusing, and none of them I never found to be cringy, so that's always a plus. The only downside about some of the main characters in this show is that I do feel like some of them don't really have a whole lot of crazy development going on. Now, for me personally, I, that's fine by me. I mean, you know, I don't need everything to be, like, super deconstruction bullshit. But it is important to note that some of the main characters in this one don't have, like, a super deep development going on. But what I think makes up for that is the fact that the characters just have a lot of very fun dialogue. And a lot of the characters' motivations and, like, what they go through in this one, I do think are interesting and entertaining enough. And maybe one little nitpick I do have to mention is that I do kind of wish that they were able to explore more of the underground world within this one. Because I do think there could have been some interesting episode ideas that could have delved more into the underground world and explore more of the characters that are down there. But, yeah, you don't really get to see a lot of them that much, unfortunately. So, I did wish that this one did have a little bit more of that, personally. But even with the amount of episodes that we got, I enjoyed most of them very much. There's, like, maybe, like, one episode I thought to be, like, maybe a little bit boring. But despite that one episode, though, all the other ones I thought were at least very entertaining throughout. And I never found it. There was any sort of pacing issue. So yeah, I would say that overall, Heat Guy J is a really good show that I really like a lot, and I would say it is a very underrated show that is pretty much forgotten all about over the years. 